Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Forgive me, my voice is so not so good, but it's all love. Bitcoin. What, I mean, what a day. I mean, <laughs> retail's back. That's why price is dropping. Because they're buying. And that's not retail. In tonight's live, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be talking and explaining as much detail as possible to help you guys understand what it means when prices are dropping that institutional players, the big funds, the main guys are buying up. You've always got to ask yourself, how is it that price can continue to go down and then all of a sudden it instantly reverses? Is it because it's managed to come up with a fantastic reversal courtesy of the MACDs or whatever indicators anybody uses? It's all about bid and the ask. It's about what someone is prepared to buy and what is someone prepared to sell. Now, you may have heard these sentences being thrown about in order flow, which is aggressive buyers, aggressive sellers, Passive buyers, passive sellers. Some would beg and say there's no such thing as aggressive buyers and there's no such thing as aggressive sellers. There's no passive buyers. It's just the market will go to wherever the liquidity is. But we've got to try and make sense of it in some way, shape or form. So in tonight's live, we're going to talk about that to help better serve you when you're coming to the charts and witnessing a move like what we've just witnessed and make the assumption that maybe they could be buying. Because Bitcoin has been going up quite significantly. And do you think after such an extended move up, the move to the all-time high? I mean, you want it to pull back before it hits the all-time high. We really want that. Is this the pullback? We'll be breaking that down very shortly. More so, I'm going to talk about my trading for today. And over the last few days, see how we've fared on our funded accounts. We've done really well. Just trading the S&P and trading quite simply the hybrid VWAPs and understanding the bid and ask. So I'm going to pull all of that together tonight so that you guys can go into the weekend and understand exactly how to navigate the charts. I won't be going live tomorrow morning nor in the evening, guys. I have got commitments that I need to put attention to. So I'm going to give you everything that I can this evening so that you guys are well equipped going into tomorrow's open in the marketplace. So if you are new passing through, make sure that you do like the stream. It helps with the good old algo. And then more importantly, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out on videos like this one. And I think this one might serve you all later on. So let's have a conversation, gang. Here we go. So, <clears throat> my God. All right, then. Yes, there is, there is no weekend gap filling, ladies and gentlemen. There will be none of that. No. But let me explain something. Bitcoin ETF shake up crypto market after storming Wall Street. You see, we've been waiting for Wall Street to come knocking on crypto's door. But it looks like crypto has just grabbed Wall Street, shut the door behind and said, shut up and listen. You are buying this, you are buying this, and you are buying this. But the one thing that's not going to happen is the liquidity in crypto obviously is not as much as what it is in Wall Street. So that means there are things that are going to happen in Wall Street that happen in Wall Street that will also happen in cryptocurrency. Gone are the days where it's just pure parabolic movements by just a few purchases from a few whales. We don't just have whales now, ladies and gentlemen. We have oceans of liquidity that can tap into the cryptocurrency marketplace. That's why when Bitcoin makes its all-time high, it's a very historic moment because it's being done on the back of Wall Street. That's what we want. We don't want it to be on the back of the dude that's just got rid of his staking um, he's, he's a platform that he's got lots of money stacked up in staking and he's now withdrawn all of that and now he's gone and bought Bitcoin. We don't want recycled crypto. We want new money. And the ETF is the reason for it. Okay? This is a big thing. Now, going over to Twitter, X, 
Oh, of course. That's where everyone. <laughs> That's where everyone is at right now. Doesn't matter if Bitcoin's price is dropping. Paris doing his thing. Shiba's starting to grab a little bit of attention. Okay, they've just had a, what appears to be gains of smart contract functionality as Shiba prices surge. All right, so we've got things changing inside of the Sheep game. I know a lot of whales are picking up Sheep, so this could be a good thing for it. You've got VET coming up in the trends as well. Going in, of course, we spoke about this earlier on. And then, yeah, we spoke about this one earlier on. But what I wanted to touch up on was the fact that we are right now waiting for that support mechanism for the ETF to come into play. That's it. Now, going over into the ETF, we just have a quick look at that for anybody wanting to know about the ETF itself. Right now, we're at the high of $35. So that's good news. We did have a high today of around 36 so, and it's still up 2%. So that's very good for the actual ETF. Going back into the ETF accumulation. So we're looking at it right now. BlackRock is still sat with that nice little 8.6 billion. So their portfolio value has done very well. Grayscale's taken a little bit of a stab from today's high. It was up nearly $1 billion. So that's not bad. But it looks like there is accumulation on the ETF itself. So if I just zoom down, you can see last four hours ago, ARK has been getting busy picking up some Bitcoin and selling it. All right, so there's always going to be this transactional movement. We've seen Grayscale sell as well, 734 Bitcoin. But listen, the thing you've got to understand is this. They're selling the Bitcoin, then they will buy the Bitcoin. They'll sell it and buy it. And that's what's going to keep on happening, okay? But they'll be buying it at different prices. Now, of course, earlier on, we were talking about the idea that the miners are still selling, and then we go over to Bitcoin's price action. Oh, this is Ethereum's. And we can see Bitcoin. I mean, come on. Has it really dropped? No. Bitcoin hasn't dropped at all. This is nothing. This is the test of the 50 EMA. So those of you who are in the game of the patterns and you are looking for specific structures, the idea is that we've got the rise and we've got a move to the upside, then we've got the retrace. This retrace is going to be the proof of the move to effectively lead towards the continuation to the upside, okay? That's what we're gunning for. And something that you wanna be paying close attention to, ladies and gentlemen, is this area right here. This is a very important point in the chart for Bitcoin, all right? In terms of support and resistance, you've got to consider that this area here is also important for Bitcoin. Structurally, when we draw it on the chart, we assume the idea that Bitcoin is going to be holding inside of these zones. And we are going into the weekend. But more importantly, we are going into what is considered the final one hour and 49 minutes of the monthly candle. Oh, my days. A green vector candle. Bettino, what if they recover the green vector candle? What if they do? And guess what? It will be fine. How likely are they going to recover all of the vector candle? Well, this is where you want to start diving into setting up zones, okay? Now, I'm going to give you this for now so that you can go into the weekend with it, and then you'll be able to sustain yourself and not take trades off a whim. Add structure to the way you can approach your trading, and focus on how much money you are prepared to lose. If you know how much money you're prepared to lose, then everything else is going to be so much more easier for you to apply and understand. And your mind won't be changed if you already know how much you're going to lose. Because trading is about the losing. You've got to be really good at losing. I was really, really good at losing a lot. But I cut that and said, you know what? I'm going to try and start losing as little as possible, and get really good at it, okay? That's what we want to focus on. So for my holders right now, looking at the monthly time frame, well, what you really want to do is go over to the daily chart. We have a wonderful violet vector candle. This violet vector candle has kind of given me a clue as to what is more than likely going to happen. Could this be a stop start? which means that this is their day where they're accumulating Bitcoin and preparing price and getting ready to make a move up, okay? The same goes for Ethereum. 
Ethereum's done sort of that, but we don't have a violet vector candle. But guys, the 5 and 13 EMA on Ethereum has not been violated. I have nothing to worry about. I'm still in that long. Where is it? I'm still in that long on Ethereum. Okay. Hasn't, it hasn't hit my zone that I'm happy to close out. I'll, I'll, I'll even put a break even in. It doesn't matter to me. Okay. If I can double my money, that's good. I'm, I'm done with that. That's cool. So that this area here would effectively double my money down to the 3,257. Okay. And we, we did leave some on the table after the high. It was like, what, $4,000, 4500 Now it's at two seven. That's fine. I'm cool with that. Okay. But Ethereum still got this green vector candle right here. And just look at where it's reversed from in the day. That's the midpoint of the vector candle at 3,313. That's the midpoint. Look at where it reversed from. Now, when you pull this back from the chart, you will never, you won't have an idea that that area, why did it stop there? Well, a number of things. The bids, was that where the pressure of the buyers came in? Was that where the aggressive sellers were stopped in their tracks? Okay, and then it initiated the reversal back up. How would you know if you never knew to split the vector candle in half? You wouldn't know, would you? And mark my words, you go back in the charts. You do this. Take any green vector candle or red vector candle, right? Itemize this because what you're doing is you're training your eyes to be receptive to it potentially happening again. The market's about practice. That's all. Okay. Go back in the charts over the weekends when Bitcoin isn't doing nothing from Friday night going through to the Saturday morning-ish, okay, UK time. Go back in the charts and mark off vector point to vector point, okay? Do that and find the midpoint of the candlestick and look at how price reacts to that zone. And when you do it enough times, you then come to understand that, hold on a second, man. Next time I see a green vector candle, I, I kind of see what they could do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that if I've, I found that after going over several candlesticks, I usually see it come down ever so slightly and then it just holds a little bit and then it starts to come back up again. Okay. So if I run along at the test of the 50% of the vector candle, assuming that the move to the upside after the green vector is Mr. Market Maker coming back down to that point, closing off his shorts and building longs again to mark prices higher, I'm going to assume that along inside this zone right here would be served and I'm going to set my stop outside of the green vector candle range. Now, be careful because the green vector itself could be all the way up here, all the way down here, and you might have a wide range. So you're going to have to work with, you've got to be very careful with that, all right? Don't have too much of a wide stop. But then again, the lower leverage you use, the less margin you use, the easier it's going to be for you to really logically approach the market without having the worry of, oh my God, I'm losing money, okay? Now, <clears throat> going back into Bitcoin, here we go. The same logic holds true with Bitcoin. Now, the green vector candle right here, take the vector, go down, and Bitcoin has yet to test the vector. Now, if I take the full candlestick and move it up to the wick, what do you have? You could be running longs on understanding that principle, okay? The same thing with Ethereum. Now we've got the same thing right here, okay? This is very important. So Bitcoin has tested the midpoint of the vector candle, right? With the exception, hold on, let me just do this correctly. There we go. Go back into the wick right there. I mean, that is despicable, man. How can you associate the midpoint of the candlestick to reverse like that? How? What's going on in that area? The highest concentration of bids came inside of this area. Now, granted, Bitcoin has been marking lower and you can see that the offer started to disappear. What do you see more of? This area here. What are you not seeing? What did we say in the live stream earlier on today? We said that if we're not seeing the commitment from the offers, that means that they may be done with selling. And if all these aggressive buyers are coming in, then what happens when they're all trapped in one area? It becomes exhaustive. The market's like, oh my God, I'm buying, I'm buying. And it's not going anywhere. 
the market naturally has to revert back and go to the next era where it can start transacting again. So that's why you see these pullbacks. And that's why you see high concentration of bids. It's all green. When you start seeing offers coming into play, that's when they're looking to start selling again. So that's when price starts to mark back up. Okay? Now, this area here is the midpoint of the vector candle, right? Stick with me on this. If we go across and look at the same area, which was the midpoint of the vector before Bitcoin started to mark up again, what do we see? Move back. We know that that whole move up is part of a vector, okay? This is the one-hour time frame. Look at this. You see this area here? Lots of bids, lots of bids. Offers start to come in. Look at the reds. Look at the high clusters of reds. They're coming into play. Bid comes in, 6 million to protect. And then it offers out. Big order, 5.38. Off it goes. Another offer. Bang, 6.3. Bids come into play. 5 million comes up again, comes down. And then, of course, Bitcoin sweeps back up again. Okay. You're looking for the relationship of the commitment of buyers and sellers at specific points. The faster they're moving price, the more information you're getting about Bitcoin. Okay. Let me give an example. Right. Here's my trading week. So it was past nine days on funded accounts. And they even sent me an email saying, well done, what have you. Here's a free T-shirt. So I, I get to pick a free T-shirt with the funded program. Um, something about top 100 traders in the Apex platform. That's the criteria. And, you know, I've done very well with these guys this week. Okay, so from the 20th, we managed to clear around 41K worth of profits on the funded accounts. We've got... Today's activities on our funded accounts. We traded four accounts today and we're just shy of around 8,800. I don't even know if you can see that. Here we go. Where is it? Here we are. There's that bit there. Here we go. So 8K today. 8K. And I didn't take 77 trades. This is obviously other accounts as well, but these are the ones that I traded and... So far, decent win rate of 80% 80, 80 after 77 trades. But you don't really want to focus too much on win rate if you're managing your risk correctly. You can have a 35% win rate and still come out on top. All right? So now what I'm going to be doing with these accounts, like I said yesterday, is I'm not going to trade these four accounts. I'm going to trade another four other accounts. And then I'm going to look to withdraw all of these and close off the accounts, take the full amount, close off the account, take another challenge, pass it again. So as long as I've got four other accounts, so for every account that I've got to an amount on, because on here it's, so we go down. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven accounts here that you can see. That's collectively 13 on one, 11 on another, five, four, three, two, whatever it is. So this one, these two here at six, um, these two here at thirteen thousand and eleven thousand, I will I will withdraw those and close the accounts, take another couple of challenges and then pass them. I've now returned back to those two funded accounts, kind of thing. That's what I'm going to be doing, okay? Because you can have loads of accounts, and the cool thing is, is that the the prop the reason why I'm closing the account is because when you withdraw, if I withdraw only five k from this, then that leaves me effectively seven ish, seven grand. Cool, but I don't want to do that. I just want, want the cash. Just withdraw it. Pay yourself, okay? If you're good enough at trading, you'll pass another challenge and do the same thing again, okay? And that's what I do between each account on the funded program. So we did really well this week. But what was I trading? I was trading the S&P, and I was trading the logic of the bids and the asks, which puts us in this situation. Today's trading was based on a projection that I sent out to everyone about the NASDAQ. I use the NASDAQ to trade the S&P. Sounds stupid, I know, but it's not. That's like saying I use Bitcoin to trade Ethereum. No, it's not. It's not stupid. It's because one moves faster than the other, and if money's coming into one, there's more than likely money going into the other. The NASDAQ and the S&P, NASDAQ trades very lightly, and the S&P has heavier contracts. So the average order amount on the S&P is around 150 to 250 contract sizes. NASDAQ's about 25, 30. And that's why it moves so fast. So this is where I was playing off my lungs today. It's 
playing off the longs of the Nasdaq doing a V-shaped reversal, which we marked off today with the guys on the platinum section. Where was it? Did we do it today? I think it was, where was it? I believe it was here. Come on. I want to show you exactly what I was talking about. Now it's taking forever. Here we go. So this is what I was saying. I was saying in that video that we were expecting them to come down. Come down into the zone. Come on, give me that flavor, please. There we are. You might see it. So I was expecting it to come down, but we if we saw a break above this point on the VWAP, then we're going to surpass that, hit the all-time high. So we needed to see if that was going to be the case, but they came away from the VWAP and aggressively came down towards the previous session's VWAP, which was this line down here, okay? That's what happened over here on exo charts, which was there, and there's the previous session's VWAP right there. Deviation away from the VWAP. Red vector candles coming into play. The bids. Look at where the offers started to come in. What we just saw on Bitcoin before it moved up. This is the NASDAQ. Shift straight back up because this area here where you see it very faintly, these are the imbalances for the bids. Now I've reversed the settings, but the imbalances for the bids tell me that those are guys that have been buying. So if they've been bidding the market down, that means at some point they're going to want to realize a return. So then that's where price comes all the way back up and aggressively at that. But you've got to be watching it because all it takes is one candle to really give you the clue that they could be getting ready to make a move. And Nasdaq's great at that. Bitcoin, if I'm going to be straight with you all, all right, look at this. So this is Ethereum, okay? Ethereum, in my opinion, and I don't know if you guys agree with me or not, but in my opinion, I think Ethereum trades so much better than Bitcoin. So much better, all right? I don't know where you guys are. Like, tell me where your thoughts are on that. How many of you find that Ethereum... <clears throat> I'm so sorry. How many of you find that Ethereum respects the vectors, respects imbalances far better than Bitcoin? Now, Bitcoin does come back into be vectors. I mean, look, this area here. These guys have been buying. Okay? Uh, we want to see them come back up. We're going to take some profits. Because this move down was triggered by an influx of buyers. They became exhausted. Look, all these guys that were selling aggressively, where are they? What happened to them here? Oh, come on. You want prices to go lower? By the principle of divergences for my delta traders, you're looking at this, this data down here. What I've done is I've changed the colors of the delta, but I've kept the figures the same. So it's green there. I've told you guys, I've told especially a couple of you guys in the Discord, I've said to you guys to keep the colors the same and do not change them. Do not change the classification of the delta at the bottom just so you know how retail is viewing it. When you get a little bit more comfortable with changing it, you'll see a minus 54% green delta that, to me, is an aggressive buy. Minus 54% green delta. Anyone in the game of exo charts and delta will think, what is this guy talking about? Why is a minus 54% green delta consistent with buying? Which is it? Well, we know that when buyers are coming in, the bids are being hit. And when the offers start to get lifted, it's off the back of the guys trying to mark prices up because they've been buying Bitcoin. That minus 54% gives me a clue that the buyers have pretty much done their business and they've trapped the retail trader short. The next one shows minus 24%. It's green. Some more buyers or bidders are coming in, just getting the last few orders in. Sellers are still coming in. Then we have this candlestick right here, which shows us effectively divergent, not divergences, but then there is a positive reading, but it's negative. This is when the offers start to come in. Look at the candlestick. That's when they're coming in. So they're getting ready to make a reversal. The offers have just come in. 
The next candle, minus 1%. Okay, nothing's happening there. So I've got to wait for confirmation. Bang! The next candle, my, uh, plus, plus 31%, but it's red. And what is red consistent with? Selling. And look, it shifts out to the upside. No different to Bitcoin. What it did over here. Where is it? This area here. That's what we're looking at. See, that was on, what was it? What was I just talking on? Was that Ethereum? That was on Ethereum. The same logic applies for Bitcoin. T, bruv, thank you, man. Thank you. They're setups, yes. They are setups, but you've got a... In the platinum section, what you get is you get trade setups every single day, okay? You get ones in the morning, you get the ones after the New York Live, and then you get one in the evening, okay, after this, okay? And then <clears throat> every... Every Saturday, you get a weekly outlook, which is like a masterclass session where I break down any questions that people have asked or anything that they want me to talk about. I go into depth in, in detail into it, okay? And then on the Sunday, I do a market watch, which is my projections for the week on specific assets, okay? So that's what you get with that membership. But you also get access to masterclasses and you get the Discord role and you get a pl platinum private chat where the guys in there are very active with trading. You know, we've got some pretty beasty scalpers in there. Some guys are doing damage in the marketplace right there. So yeah, it's community there. They're tough traders, believe me. They are tough traders. Tino, can you use order flow with spreads and CFDs? It's that aspect to trading that I've not quite grasp grasped yet, sorry. So when you're when you're um, <clears throat> when you're trading the CFD market, the problem is is the true volume. Now that's what I started on, and I had to understand the volume. And the only way that I could understand it was by vector candles, because I knew that the vector candles were fundamentally the point of where the order flow would be getting aggressive to the upside, to the downside. I know market maker is building shorts. Closing off his longs from a previous move, okay? That's what I understand about it. Then I stepped into the depth of market because it wasn't accessible for me being from the UK. Found a platform that worked for me. Now I use exo charts, use book map. See, the book map gives you different bits of information. Now the problem is exo charts, you can't trade from exo charts, but you can trade from book map. And you, you can link any exchange on Exo on, on Bookmap, any exchange near enough. Binance, Bybit, Binance US, Coinbase, Femex, and you can also put requests in for a special exchange if they do have the API key, but you can take trades off it, okay? But Bookmap gives me the idea of where the order flow is on orders that are coming in and out. Exo Charts is good at highlighting orders that have been placed. Okay, so I know here that's an order that's been hit in the marketplace. That's good news for me. Okay, I need that information. I go over to Bitcoin. <clears throat> Sorry. Yo, my voice is so bad. My voice is so bad. Give me a second. Man, so sorry. But yeah, that's the difference with it, with with exo charts, and that's something that really does give you a bit of an edge. Even trade, look at look at how Bitcoin respects that VWAP man, comes back into it, and that's all I'm going to say to you. All you need to do is wait for Bitcoin to move away from the VWAP. Go back and study it. <laughs> look. Okay, so look. Do you remember yesterday's drop? Right. What was it? Was it Coinbase FUD? Really, what was it? Or was Coinbase the reason for it? <laughs> it just whips down. But it happens to reverse from where? The VWAP. What is your prediction for monthly close at 12? Do you think we're looking for a move past the all-time high? Okay, so going into Bitcoin, if we look at where we are previously... This is where we know they're going to see offers coming into play. Now, this is at 64,000, 64,300 is the top side of the move. What I need to do, where are we? 
What I need to see happening, guys, for the holders, if we just go into the 12-hour chart, puts things into perspective. Look, here we go. It looks a bit crazy, I know. So, <clears throat> in here, there's a million at 60,500, right? Over here, there was originally 6 million transacted. So, also, 7 million transacted there, which they've already been to and came back up. Above, we've got another 11 million that hasn't been transacted just yet fully. Go up again, we've got the 6 million that's transacted. We've got 17 million at 62,600. So that means price will have to go up first, break 62.6, come back into it to get filled. Okay, that's what logically we want to see happening. All right. Up here, we've got 5 million that hasn't been fully transacted. So what are we seeing? We're seeing missed orders or not fully completed orders. So they're not necessarily done with this zone. There is an overwhelming pressure of selling Bitcoin, 64,600, you got 32 million up there, okay? Go even higher, you got another 16 at 66, keep on going, you got 6 million up there, keep going, 6.75, up here you got 8, up here you got 30 at 69,540, up here, you got 27 million at 70,216, keep going, 19 million at 73,000, nearly 74,000, all right? This is why the all-time high is going to effectively create a sweep, so these guys can quickly sell. I've sold Bitcoin at $73,000. Wow, euphoria. Beautiful time for a sharp reversal. Remember, I'm looking for the 50K to be the new 20K. That's what we really want. As long as Bitcoin can sweep the all-time high, because we are not far away. And by the principle of the violet vector candle, the start of the next monthly candle will need to behave. And Asia will need to do a good job of it too. Because we're going into Friday, and in Friday, we don't really have that much of a problem in terms of news. It's the start of the month, and the ISM PMI is coming out tomorrow. But it's next week that the issue is. Next week, we've got Powell testifying in the ADP farm employment change. We've already seen the unemployment claims come in higher today at 215,000, but the core price index came in in line with expectations, and the market effectively, where is it? <coughs> oh, that's my top step account as well, sorry. Yeah, so that's a funded account. Top step, they want you to do five days of $200 plus. So we've done two so far. And we're just slowly building that one up. I'll keep you guys posted on how that one's going anyway. Um, the stocks end the month at new highs after inflation data. And the good thing is, is the guys are all happy because they came in in line with estimates. So when it comes in line with estimates, it means, okay, the guys were right about it. So that could protect... Pre effectively mean that they're going to be right about it again later on. But the idea of the Fed cutting the interest rates maybe in June is what prices are effectively going to be pricing in very soon, which is why you're seeing the Nasdaq and the S&P pulling back ever so slightly. OK, so it all relies on Bitcoin inside of this area. The midpoint of the vector candle right here at 60,383 is a critical point for Bitcoin. Because if it continues to go down in the next hour and 24 minutes, then the start of the next month will effectively bring Bitcoin down. But guess what, man? Unless it breaks the 5 and 13 EMA, because look at this. Now, remember, this will change. Okay? The longer Bitcoin stays up here, and then when the next candle comes into play, and as long as it stays inside of this range, okay, between um, 60,385 and of course, the top side at 64,044, the 5 and 13 EMA will get closer and closer to price. Then you'll start to see this behavior right here. So if I zoom in, you'll see this. When the EMAs contract, they're laggard. But when they contract, you can make sense of whether or not the next move is going to be favorable to the upside or to the downside. As long as they stay in line of the contraction of the moving averages, then logic would say, that even if Bitcoin were to come down towards this point here, the 5 and 13 EMA would find themselves in a compression right here. Logic would say momentum slowed down. So now we've got a range. Then we're going to wait for Bitcoin to try and surpass, retrace, continuation out. Okay. Uh... Peter. 
Thanks, man. What is it you're trading when you trade the S&P then? All I see here in the UK is spread bet for CFDs. I'm trading the futures markets on the CME, so I have to pay for data to come through the CME. And I'm with Apex doing the funded programs over there because they give access to people to trade from the UK. Okay? Then when they give you the payout, you then goes they, they effectively send you an invoice per se. You're effectively working with them. Okay? So that's where it is. Now, there are futures programs that I can go in from the UK, but their fees are terrible, especially with the way I'm, I scalp. I can't be paying those fees. I'll get burnt completely. So I've got to try and find... Uh, for me, I want TD Ameritrade. That would be an ideal scenario for me. But they've made life difficult in the bloody UK. Um... <clears throat> What else we got? Take a look at Solana. Yeah, let's look at Solana because this, this thing is just doing numbers today. Okay, so Solana, big sweep to the upside. Okay, it's taken out the previous high. Happy day. Solana was always going to do that, man. And it's consolidated really nicely. I think what we're going to see on the back of Ethereum, okay, and the back of Bitcoin, Solana's going to have its day. And I think today should have been Solana's day. Granted, it has rejected its highs and it's pulled back. But... Taking out this high, if you look on the higher time frames on the weekly, you look left and you can see that we've got this area right here of interest. These are the two key areas for Solana. So I would expect if Solana sustains itself over the weekend, more than likely going to try and see a try and break out towards 147, but that would need a lot of commitment to come into play for Solana. So just be very careful with that, okay? <clears throat> Yeah, I'm all right, guys. I'm I'm run down. That's the straight truth right there. I've had a very interesting week. So that's the truth, okay? Um, I don't know, Janet. Yeah, VET. Here we go. Let's just quickly have a look at VET because I know guys have been wanting to have a look at that. VET USDT. All right, then. Cool. So that's where we are with VET right now. Four-hour time frame. It is pulling back and, you know, it's see critical areas for VET. It's breaking it down by the principle of the recovery of the wick. We did say that it could be happening if they do invalidate these zones. And there is a clear valid invalidation of that range. And that's what you've got to look for. That's where most of my setups that I provide everyone on the Traders Reality website, that's exactly what I do. I base it off these blocks because I rely on the fact that the market has a memory. And if the market has a memory, then there's a good chance that it's going to trigger that memory when it comes to buying and selling because it means the bids can come in again at a cheaper price to then offload price at a higher price and trigger the offers to come in. It's exactly what we look at over here on the coin ank. When we drop down to a one hour time frame, each of these areas that you see price holding at. So here's an example what to look for. You see this area here, 11 million got transacted and it was 116% over. So that means 16% more value was exchanged at that point. So the next time you see price make a move to the upside after it's aggressively hit the offers, which is this red stuff here. Look, they were selling 403 Bitcoin. The original amount was 5.89 million. 27 million got transacted, 359% increase. That means people came in, quickly sold, okay? Look at it. Rise, retrace, continuation out. What is the rise, retrace, continuation? Well, the rise is the offers, 27 million of them, okay? The, the retrace, 6 million, <clears throat> 7, well, 2.4 at that point, 10 million, <clears throat> held price, bids got engaged. Where's the offers there? They're holding price until they start offering out again. See that? That little offer there? Starting. What do you see here? 17 million, brother. 12. Look how the same area over here triggered people to step in. It originally was 5 million, 27 transacted. Where is it? Where is that order? There you go. It was originally 12 million, 17 transacted in the same zone. Give it a bit of freedom. And then, of course, it's gone up. That's what you're looking for. Look at the bids and the offers. So when you see Bitcoin taking a shoe bag to the downside, right? 
Don't start thinking, oh my God, I need to sell, I need to sell. No, 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 no. Unless Bitcoin starts to move so aggressively to the downside, I'm talking aggressively at speeds like, I mean, yesterday was just a typical example, how fast they move price down. But usually when you see that happening and they're going to start bouncing back up again, it's, it was a quick liquidity run, okay? But it was effectively a test of the VWAP, but they came back up. If you start seeing panic happening in the marketplace, don't lose your minds. Just make sure you manage your expectations accordingly. Don't risk too much. It's going to burn money for no reason. All right, ladies and gentlemen, listen. If you are new to this channel, make sure, again, like the stream, man, and subscribe. And you'll be tuning into this channel again next week on Monday. I am not going live at all tomorrow, guys. I'm going to give myself a rest. But make sure you hit the notification bell, all right? Take away what we've done here on the bids and the offers and watch the live streams for this week and you'll learn so much more about it, all right? Remember, tradersreality.com. Everything's in the description of the video on the live and I'll be checking in with all of you on Monday, all right? Please trade safely, guys. Mad love and respect. Peace.